Hey, Tom here from the Run Testers with another of our essential pit guides where we look at the favourite pieces of kit that aren't really shoes and aren't really watches that the Run Testers are using on a sort of day by day basis. Let's take a look. Okay, so the next person that we've got from the Run Testers doing their essential guide is Mike. Mike, why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about the type of runner you are and how that affects the things that you choose to, to wear when you go running? Um, I best probably best describe myself as a runner that likes to get quicker. Um, I am not as quick as Nick. I'm never going to be as quick as Nick, but I do enjoy getting faster, getting better. So. I will surround myself with kit that can help me do that. Um, and that's kind of what um, is going to influence my picks uh, for this video. Cool. Okay. And what sort of distances do you normally run? So, I mean, marathon is probably my kind of um, kind of favoured distance in terms of max distance. I've done ultras. I mean, ultra is not, distance is not really my kind of funnest distance to do. Um, I enjoy the shorter stuff. I've started to enjoy the shorter stuff a lot more. So definitely and kind of 10Ks and a half. So I actually really like 10 mile races. Um, I know that's mm -hmm. not everyone's cup of tea, but um, I kind of think it's a really good kind of distance to go after and go quick and get yeah, a good time. Seems so to be getting a bit bit more popular now. Yeah, and hopefully that, I mean, there's there's going to be more races out there outside of the kind of few that are, or big races that are out there a little bit around the 10 mile distance. Nice. All right, well, without further ado, let's jump into your first of your four picks. What have you got for us? Yeah, so I basically try to steer clear from tech mostly. There is mm -hmm. something tech based in here, but I try to steer clear of that because, you know, I talk about that mostly anyway. So, and a lot of those kind of fit my essentials, but I try to pick, look for some other things that I kind of won't leave the house with or will use generally. So, the first thing that I will grab before I go for a run is this. That is the um, flip belt. So, this is the flip belt classic. Mm -hmm. um so it's a little bit older there are some kind of new versions so this is the one without the zip now i probably would go for the one with the zip but actually the one that kind of one that i have that doesn't have it's actually been fine for me generally um the reason that i really like this is because i don't feel the weight of my phone and my keys um maybe i will take one or two gels with me um on training runs but generally i try not to take too much um and it's just it just works for me. The, the key, I've tried so many belts and I've always had that thing where they kind of move about and, you know, I don't like to run with a lot of stuff in the first place. So this is the belt that's kind of worked for me. Um, I think it's, you know, it's, it's kind of expensive in the grand scheme of things, but I think it's worth the money in terms of um, how it works. Um, I generally stick it in the wash when it gets a bit sweaty and it's been no problem going through the wash uh, from that perspective. So yeah, my first kind of pick um, is the Flip Belt Classic. Popular choice, I think... Um, we did it a while ago, but I think Kieran picked the, the flip belt as well. Um, so, and I've never used a flip belt. I remember when you got that flip belt and you didn't get the, the zip version. Yeah. Um, and I thought at the time, I really want to try one of those out, but I still haven't got around to trying them. Um, is there, are there any other belts that you've tried that um, are almost there or maybe not as good as, as flip belt? Um, I have. So I've tried some of the kind of Salomon stuff. I've tried kind of... Um, a new one uh, that I've kind of used recently is the Fitletic um, belt. But this is the one, I mean, uh, I think I've kind of said this, but the kind of guys in the team knows that I don't like running with a lot of stuff. So anything that can feel as minimal as possible in terms of kit um, is ideal for me. And this is the belt for me that does the best job of that, but also allowing me to carry stuff that I want to carry um, and enough that I want to carry um, without kind of hindering, you know, or annoying me when I'm out running. So that's kind of why this has worked for me um, and why I've kind of stuck with it. Cool. Well, pretty positive review on a belt there. All right, let's jump on to the second choice. What have you got? So second choice is, so this is, um, so I actually, when it comes to kind of winter training or cold training, I actually generally would kind of wear just a t-shirt. Um, I'm fine with that. I get hot very quickly. Um, but since last year um, and when I got um, COVID, I had to kind of think and the kind of recovery stuff, I had to really think a bit more about 
layering and kind of you know going out with more more clothes than they normally would and just kind of keeping warmer um, but i still didn't want to carry a lot of stuff or wear a lot of stuff so um i thought about base layers um i've tried a few base layers out um i got sent this one um from the guys at saw running so this is their uh, merino uh base layer so it comes in long sleeve and short sleeve the long sleeve is more expensive it's about 75 pounds the short sleeve is 55 pounds i think so it is expensive but of all the base layers that I've tested, this is the one that has just now that if I want to go out and wear something else on top of my t-shirt, like this is what I grab for and I hope that it's, I've washed basically. But actually um, what I found is, and obviously the whole thing with Merino is that, you know, it doesn't ca hold that odor. Um, so you can kind of wear it multiple times, I think before you wash it. And what I've done is it's got sweaty. I've chucked it um, on the um, radiator the next day, the next couple of days, it's dried. It, I can't get, there's no smell there and I've been able to go out and run with it. So this is the base layer that's kind of really works for me. So I got sent the long sleeve one and I, it was so, I liked it so much. I bought the short sleeve version as well. So this is a base layer that's kind of worked um, really well for me. One that's kind of been become an essential um, piece of kit for me. Nice. Yeah, I know we're all quite big fans of Saw. Not not only over the past couple of years, we've all tried Saw and, and used them quite a bit. I've, I've got the Saw, got really like, like two-in-one running shorts. I can never remember the name of them, but I use them for like every run. And I think that's the key with Saw. You get a lot of comments from people or people yeah. talking about the sort of cost of these, these clothes. But the number of times I use those shorts, every race, every big run I do, as long as they're washed, um they're just they're just worth it um i think for that sort of money and you're, you're probably finding the same thing that, yeah that's exactly what i said people ask me about the kit when they see that i wear it and i just say look i know it's expensive but actually i wouldn't recommend it if unless i thought it was worth spending on and i think the base layers the shorts um the vests i race in the socks have been great and i've run you know use them at kind of marathon distance so yeah that they've worked for me across the board on a lot of different pieces of kit yeah def definitely I, th I think with especially on like race day it's nice to have a really nice piece of kit that you really trust isn't it um, yeah. and you know it's going to do the job you don't want to be skimping on big marathon days no cool okay well that's a, another great choice um hit us with your third <laughs> okay so this is an interesting one so these well these are ons hybrid running shorts um mm -hmm. yeah so these i know what you're going to say here <laughs> so these right these costs uh i think 80 pounds so they are not cheap but these are very nice shorts but it's what comes with it. it's the other part of the shorts that i actually like and love um and I actually wish i could just buy them on their own now the reason i picked these is i basically i think i wear these i've got two pairs i think i wear these on pretty much every run i do and that's training runs if i'm just going out for a run if i'm racing i wear these now the reason i do is because I don't get any kind of chafing. I've never, I don't, I cannot recall a time that I've got chafing wearing these shorts underneath my um, race shorts. They're really comfortable. Um, they've held up. I've had these for a long time. Even though I've, I've got a couple of pairs, they've held up really, really well. Like I said, they've worked great for me in terms of racing. Um, they're brilliant. I just, yeah, I wish they were, um, they came separately um, because these are good shorts, but actually I really only use them for the undershorts. Yeah, I'm. I, I've got a pair of those too. Um, and I'm not as big a fan of them as you. I think they're a little bit small for me. I know you like your shorter shorts <laughs> than I do. I, I prefer them to be maybe a couple of inches longer. But um, I'm the same with you. I think I've uh, the shorts, the outer. I got no idea where those are now. I, they've disappeared a long time ago. But I've still got two pairs of the inners floating about, yeah. and I, I use them um, quite frequently. So if you're listening, on bring out a just standalone these. pair of just these. these inners for the guys. They're, they're yeah. the, yeah, there's two people here who like using them. Um, and yeah, they're, they're just, I find they're the right amount of sort of, com not compression, but they just feel really comfortable without feeling too tight. But yeah, yeah they're great for chafe. Definitely. Cool. Okay, any other shorts that you use for sort of um, inner, inners that are almost there as good as the ons? I, I personally haven't found something that I feel as confident to, first of all, race in um, something that I would go long distance with that I felt comfortable yet that kind of matches this. So if there's something else out there that some people believe there are kind of can match what I'm getting from these other shorts, then great. But I personally haven't found anything yet that's kind of really worked for me. I think like... Um, Saw so do have some kind of undershorts built into their kind of two-in-one shorts, which I think work quite nicely. But 
the short element. Um, I wish it was shorter. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the closest <laughs> I've got to. But uh, yeah, I haven't. I basically, I haven't found anything that I've that's worked for me. I feel it's matched in terms of what I've got from um, from yeah. these. I think the thing I find about the the on ones is that they're they're not very thin. They're they're, they're relatively thick. Yeah. Um, but it works. Whereas the ones you get in the saw sort of t- two piece um, shorts have really thin inners. So yeah. Um, it's quite a big difference, and I haven't found many that have a, that sort of thickness. They they always feel like swimming shorts to me. No, sometimes. Exactly. cool, brilliant. Okay, and then what's your fourth one? Leave us on a high. What have you got? Okay, so I said I wasn't going to do tech. I didn't want to talk about other stuff, but I did <laughs> end up, and this is kind of to do with recovery. And I'm, you know, like a lot of people, thinking more about recovery now um, when I'm trying to run a bit faster. So I have gone for this. This is the Theragun. So this is Theragun Prime. Um, Interesting. So, um, I was, like a lot of people, I was very skeptical about uh, massage guns. And actually through work, I've had to test a lot of different ones. And obviously Theragun is the, is the top one. That's the one that people know. And of all the ones that I've tested, this is the one that's ended up, it kind of sits on my um, kind of mat, which I use for kind of my recovery. And I, I do use it. I do use it every run when I've had a hard run. I do use this um, and for me, it works. You know, it's always this thing where how do you kind of gauge how well these things work in terms of recovery. But for me, I've used it. I, you know, I try to use it for, you know, I don't have to use it for a long time uh, on my legs and it just works for me. Now, this is kind of not the top end one, but um, actually that's not an issue for me that the extras that you're getting on the top end one, I don't think massively outweigh what you're going to get here. Mm. The difference, the key thing for me in comparison to the other massage guns that I've tested is that I feel like the the massaging effect and the kind of intensity that you get from this one feels much better than the ones I've tested. So that's why this is the one that I use. Um, it's got some connected elements, but I'll, I'll be honest, I don't I don't really use that. That's there if you you know if you're a beginner and you really don't know what you're doing and that's quite nice to have, but ultimately I don't really use it. I think you kind of learn to know how to use it, when to use it. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just worked for me. It's become part of um, my kind of recovery process after kind of those tougher runs. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I know as a as the as a group, the run testers have a debate about Theragun quite a bit, and I know Kieran's quite keen on it. But I think we got to the point where he you can't really justify any sort of claims around what it's doing yeah. from a sort of recovery perspective. But he says it just feels nice. <laughs> and it feels like it's doing the job, so that's enough for him. Yeah. Um, but the question I'll give to you, and this is a tricky one, that because um, I. A few people have asked me about this recently saying, oh, I'm thinking of buying a, a, a Theragun. And I've always said, well, that because the Theragun is probably the most expensive of those sort of um, pneumatic massage yeah. guns on the market. But would, are you thinking that there's a reason why it's more expensive in comparison to those other ones? Does it just feel a bit stronger or just like it's be- better built? Yeah, I feel like, I mean, I, I think they kind of kind of level pegged a lot of them in terms of that kind of build quality and stuff that you get. I think um, in terms of the bat, the way it retains the battery, I think is a strong point for me. You know, I don't charge it; have to charge it even if I'm using it regular uh, on a regular basis. Um, and I ju- like I said, I, just in terms of the ones I've tested, I've tested five or six of them, and I just feel the feeling, the sensation of the of the um, the percussive kind of method that um, Theragun uh, kind of use it, it just feels better to me personally. Um, and I feel like I'm getting kind of a proper kind of, you know, getting those, working those kind of kinks or those kind of issues that you might have in your legs um, or other parts of your body. Mm. So that's that's kind of why it's ended up, you know, staying with me and I, you know, kind of use it as much as I do. Well, if it, if it works for you, it works for you. So yeah, yeah can't deny that. Um, Brilliant. All good choices. And I don't think we've had most of those <laughs> so far. So that's good. Um, well, thanks a lot uh, for another of our essential guys. Cheers, Mike. So that's it from us. Thanks a lot for watching another video from the Run Testers. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon and check out the channel for all the other videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes, along with watches and the latest headphones out at the moment. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.